some older faces that have returned. Lots of good faces out there. You guys have great faces. And has anybody ever told you that? No. You guys have great faces. You look good. You're looking good this morning. You're looking good too, Travis. You're looking good. You're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Oh, thank you. I was going for the water look. It's Water Sunday. It does? Wow. Check that out. I did not know that I was that in tune. But I don't have a lot of announcements, which is awesome. That means we just move right on into our uh, worship program. All I'm going to mention is the spiritual retreat day. I want you to mark your calendar well ahead of time, October 12th. Now we're going to move on because Jesus is just all right. Stand and see. Grab it and shake it over there. Shake it for you. Shake it for yourself. Shake it for everyone in the room. Shake it for Jesus. Shake it for God.
bow our heads. Lord, now in this moment we lift ourselves higher in spirit towards you. We lift ourselves off the ground, Lord. We lift ourselves away from our ego. We lift ourselves up to you, Lord, because we want to meet you halfway because we know you're going to come the rest of the way if we just lift ourselves. Lord, we're thankful for all that you have provided in this world, in this life. We know we have many great blessings that we sometimes don't think about, Lord. We thank you now. We take this opportunity now to thank you for the wonders that we have in our lives. Be with us, Lord, throughout this week as we face new trials, but also new opportunities. Help to remind us take advantage of all the opportunities that you have provided because we know they're from you. We pray all this in your morning. So now we're going to put a statement. If you would read. <coughs> so this is up there. Right. We are the village church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people who make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with the broken world. We are Jesus' instruments of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. to go out to the village kids space and I'm going to do the prayer time early today which I know I didn't prepare you for. Does anybody have a prayer concern? And if you didn't write it down you can just tell me what it is. Kristen. Um, there are several teachers right now in different districts that are working on contracts licensing for a prayer contract which is asking So prayers for teachers in districts who are working without a contract and uh, who will be paid Fair, paid fair wage and uh, treated fairly. Kathy? Uh, I have a co worker named Julie that was just diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, prayers for her, and then she also has uh, two young boys, a second grader and a fourth grader. So we can just kind of grab and surround her family. So prayers for Julie, who's uh, dealing with cancer and for her, for her young sons. Um, prayers for Thanksgiving and celebration for a colleague. As, we, uh, as they contemplate Syria, for all of us to pray for uh, resolution for uh, the atrocities that have occurred in Syria. We're all concerned about that. And Dana asks for prayers. One of her favorite teachers from high school died this last week. He was only 42. Dana's one of our village kids leader. So prayers for his family. Uh, prayers for two friends of ours, Al and Karen, both who have been huge fighters for the values we have around here. Both of them are dying. Um, they're both in hospice care. So. Yeah, Kurt and I have two friends, um, Al and Karen, who are both in hospice care. and Both have been um, great fighters for justice um, in Wood County and in Lucas County. So prayers for those two great people. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we trust that you hold our world in your care. We pray especially today for world leaders. We are so concerned for the people of Syria, for the terrible atrocities that appear to have occurred there, and there really doesn't seem to be at all a simple answer, God. We pray for your wisdom, 
for our president, for our leaders, for world leaders who need to make difficult choices. And we pray that cool heads will prevail as decisions need to be made. God, closer to home in our, our families, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, we pray for people we know who grieve this week, people who are walking that journey towards death with loved ones. Because God, we know that life is fragile. Life is not going to last forever for any of us on this earth. God, help us all to live ready to be prepared to die live life fully, to trust in you, to trust that we have eternal life, and to live with grace, thankful for every moment that we have. God, surround with care those who are walking close to death these days. God, we pray for, for workers who are struggling for negotiations, for the people who are being treated unjustly. We pray for so many situations of injustice in our world, for, for people who don't have housing, who don't have bed care, who can't find jobs. God, we pray that you might use us as followers of Jesus to make peace and to see justice in all that we do, God. Hear our prayers, hear our concerns. God, give us peace in our hearts so that we might be peacemakers. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. The scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothed with greater honor and our less respectable members are treated with, treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Well, welcome to Water Sunday. How many people brought their water with them? I know one person forgot. Oh, I see some hands. Excellent. We're going to put the water in the big bowl there after a little bit here. And uh, I'm going to give people who brought water a chance to just tell us quickly where you brought the water from. So I'm excited to hear your stories about where you brought your water from and what fun things you did this summer. And we're going to do this every summer, so if you forgot to do it this year, you'll have a chance to do it next year. So uh, never fear if you uh, forgot to do it this year. Will you pray with me now? Oh yeah, there's Jamie collecting on hers. He's downstairs, so he can't see the picture. 
You can go back to the other slide for now. We'll put that one back up later. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for many blessings. We thank you for many gifts. And we ask you now to help us celebrate our gifts. Speak to us your message for us. Speak to us, oh God, we are listening. Amen. So not too many years ago, there was one of those TV movies that the kids were all crazy about. It had great music. You know those songs that you get stuck in your head and you just keep hearing it over and over again? You just keep singing it? This particular show was called High School Musical. Oh, grown. I know, looking back, it sounds cheesy now, right? outdated but at the time my kids loved it and so did I the show stopping song was the one with this refrain we're all in this together you remember that one if you didn't have kids at the time you probably didn't have to sit through the movie over and over and over again but I did it was a feel-good song about kids coming together to live their dreams we're all in this together. We're not the same. We're different in a good way. Together is where we belong. We arrived because we stuck together. We arrived because we stuck together. Some of you remember that kind of thing from high school, right? We're all in this together, and it shows when we stand hand in hand and make our dreams come true. Okay, I know it's a Disney movie, right? It's a Disney movie. There were conflicts, but in the end, Everybody was happy and felt good. The message of the song and the show comes through. <coughs> Being different is good. It's a value we hold up here at the village, right? And there's great value in being together. We celebrate this value every Sunday. This is the value that the Apostle Paul was talking about. In the scripture that Christian just read, he was, he was writing to people in a young church in a town called Corinth. They were having some conflicts in their young church. Because any time two or three people get together, there's conflict, right? They were having trouble holding their community together. Paul was writing to them and trying to encourage them stay together. Even though when a group of people get together, there's conflict, he was encouraging them. Let's all stay together. So he used an analogy. He said, you are the body of Christ. You're the body of Christ. He said the body of Christ is just like a human body. It has many parts. And he says, a foot doesn't say, well, because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body. That'd be stupid, right? And just because an ear is not an eye, that doesn't mean the ear is any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how would it hear, right? If the whole body were hearing, how would it smell? But God arranged the body to work together as a whole. There are many members, but one body. And the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. You can try, it doesn't work. This is where it really gets good. When you remember that it's analogy for the church. Paul says, the parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. They're the ones you can't get along without. Wow. Think about that as the church. And he says, the members that we think are less honorable and less respectable, you know what we do with those? We give them the most honor and the most respect. What would happen in society if we did that? Give the most respect and the most honor to the ones that seem the least respectable and the least honorable. 
he really brings it home with the last line. He says, if one member suffers, we all suffer together. And if one rejoices, we rejoice together. Well, that part's easy, right? If one rejoices, we rejoice together. But if one suffers, we all suffer together. Wouldn't it be a great world if we would just listen to that part, just that little part? No room for envy, because if one person rejoices, we rejoice, right? And no room for really for suffering, because if one person suffers, we would all suffer, and we would do something about it. Well, this analogy of like the body having many parts and everybody having their role to play, it, it really just kind of struck me. The other day, I was driving down the highway. It was just a silly little thing, right? I was driving down the highway from downtown um, down to Perrysburg, and I was crossing the Maumee River. I'm sure most of you have driven down that road because any times, just like me. And I looked over in the Maumee River, and there was this floating dock. There was a dock attached to the bank, and then there was just this small little floating dock. And I thought, how did they make that dock? Floating? I thought, is it like with a boat anchor? Is there like a chain and a big anchor? And then I thought, well, then it would like float around. And I'm like, do they use pylons? And then I thought, I have no idea how they make that dock. I have no idea how to do that. And then I thought, you know what? I have no idea how they build a bridge over the river. I mean, I know some of my kids, some kids in physics class, they build those like bridges with two picks, and you know, I, I never did physics. I have no idea how to build a bridge. Kristen's laughing at me. See the slides do. Hmm? You make your kids do that. And then I thought, you know what? If you hold a gun to my hand, I could not tell you how the engine in my car works. I have no clue how, like, what do they call it, an internal combustion engine? Karen's shaking her head. Oh, I don't know how a car works, right? But I can do this. I can give comfort and encouragement to a parent whose teenager just got a DUI. I've done that, right? I've done that. And last year, some old friends of mine from Finley from my old church called me and their son, who was 20-something, had died of an overdose. And they called and asked me to do the funeral. And I said, of course. And that was, I, I could do that. So I went and I did the funeral and I was in the funeral home waiting for the funeral to start and this retired biology teacher, who I've known for a long time because he was in my church, walked up to me and he's like, Sherry, I did not know how you were going to do this for you. And I'm like, you know, this is really easy. This is easy, but I can do this. I mean, I know how to do this. And I looked at him and I said, Jim, I do not know how you taught biology all those years. Because <laughs> I could not teach high school biology. I could not be a teacher. I mean, I would not last a month. I would not last a week being a teacher. I can't do that. I don't know how Travis plays the guitar the way he I don't know how Justin plays the drums. And by the way, Justin's really sick today. I really don't know how he played the drums sick today. He's got a fever. I don't know how Frank plays the bass. I don't know how John Starr balances our financial books every month. That would make me crazy. When I was when we were starting out as the village, I was paying, I was the one keeping the financial records and paying the bills, and thank goodness Shelley walked in and said, I would like to help this church. What can I do to help? I mean, I have been praying for an office manager. Pray for an office manager. I mean, I, I don't know how I would do this without Shelly. I am so thankful that Teresa runs the tech team and makes sure we have PowerPoints every week. That is not my gift, right? For 18 months, Rock ran the setup and takedown team. Now, I could do that, but I can't do that and preach every single I could go on and on, right? I could talk about the people who do the food, schedule the greeters, the village kids leaders, the TAVIC leader. I'm going to leave somebody out, right? I could talk about all the people who, the people who do outreach, right? The people who keep the wheels of the village going. Every person who participates in the village community is a vital part of this body, right? We all have something to contribute. 
It's like this. If you were not here, it would be like the body is missing an eye or a toe. They tell me that if we're missing one of our toes, it like throws off our balance, right? Like if you're missing your big toe, even your little toe, right? So if, if one of you were not here, it wouldn't be the same community. Each one of us has a purpose. You have a purpose. You are of value to this community. At the beginning of the scripture today, that was read, Paul reminds the people that they are bound together by one spirit. As members of the body of Christ, we are baptized into one spirit. In baptism, we claim the Holy Spirit for the person who is baptized. In baptism, we become a part of the community. It is our right of initiation. Right? It's the way we're initiated. Now, when we're baptized, our contribution to the community might not yet be revealed. How many of you were baptized when you were a baby? <laughs> wow, a lot of you, right? We probably couldn't identify what your contribution to the community was going to be yet. But when you were baptized, we claimed you as a member of the community, a beloved child of God, a full participant in this community who would bless this community and be blessed. Once you are baptized, your baptism is never taken away from you. That's why we never re-baptize somebody. In a little bit, we're going to do what we call a remembrance of our baptism. I'm going to invite everybody to, to touch the water. And one by one, I'm going to invite you to, to use the water and mark a sign of the cross on somebody behind you in line and say, remember your baptism and be thankful. Now you're going to say, I don't remember my baptism. I was a baby. I want you to remember that you are baptized. Remember that you're part of this community and that you were baptized. You know you were baptized because somebody told you that you were baptized. Okay? And no matter how far sometime in your life you may have stepped away from God, God just kept following you, okay? God never stepped away from you. And that's why if somebody comes back to the church and says, I want to be re-baptized, we don't ever re-baptize somebody because that would imply that somehow you were able to erase your baptism. But once we mark you with the water of baptism, you, you can do nothing to separate yourself from that baptism. When I talk to kids about it, I say it's like an invisible tattoo. Once you're marked with the water of baptism and claimed with the blessing of God, you're always baptized. But sometimes we touch ourselves with the water, or we're marked with the water, the pastor or somebody in the community marks us with the water to remember, to help us remember that we're baptized, that we're covered with the Holy Spirit, that we're filled with the grace of God, and that we're marked as a member of the community. That's what it means to, to touch the water, to Water is cleansing, right? It, it, you know, it, we, we sometimes need to be cleansed of our sin, to step into new life, just to, to mark a new time in our lives. But this is what we do know. You're always of value to God. You're always of value to the body of Christ. You're unique. And your unique gifts are important this body. And so today we celebrate the unique gifts that we all bring. I want to invite you to think about what gift you might have that you're not using in this community. <coughs> Perhaps you're ready to serve in this community in a way that you haven't been. We, we try to let you know about opportunities um, that you can serve. You know, we, we post announcements and we, we put things in the program to let you know. And you might read through those and say, well, they don't really need me. You know, they say that they need people to do such and such, but they don't really need me. Well, we do need you. We really do invite you to serve. But but maybe you you have a way that you want to serve that isn't listed in the program. Or there hasn't been an announcement about that. And, and if you do, I would 
would love to sit down and talk with you. I'd be happy to have coffee with you. My phone number's in the program. My email is there. Set up a time. I'll be happy to talk to you. Your, your gifts might not fit one of the opportunities we've put out there yet. We want everybody to use their gifts in the best way that suits you. Because we really are in this together. Our differences really are a gift. We really believe that. Even though our differences sometimes cause tension. They also give us the creativity of the community that we are. God knew something when God created a diverse world. It'd be boring if we were all the same, wouldn't it? So today we give thanks. We give thanks for the diversity. We give thanks for our gifts. Let's, let's give thanks. And let's, let's use our gifts to make our church even more. invite the band now to come up and sing a song and then we're going to move into our water ritual together.
So we have um, gathered water from around places near and far. If you brought some water, I'm going to invite you to come maybe take a seat up here in the front. Go ahead and bring your water down here. And we're going to invite you to just um, tell us where you brought your water from and pour it in here. Um, it just kind of represents the diversity of where we're all from. So I'm going to just invite you to come and tell us where it's from and put the water in. You want to go first, Jim? Yeah, you can just put it in a big bowl here. Tell them where, do you remember where we got it? Massachusetts. And we went there for um, Jackie and Elaine's wedding. Bowl starts getting full, we may not be able to put all of it in any It's a pretty big bowl. It's a pretty big bowl. All right, did I just try this out? I don't want the people to be able to pull the line. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, Island River in Bright Village. My water is from a recent camping trip. Um, overlooking uh, Lake Huron before we went over the bridge to Canada. Mm -hmm. A little sand issue, but that's okay. We're going to touch the water, but if people don't want to touch that water, they can touch the tap water. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is water from the Long Island Sound in the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm.
we're going to bless the water now. So why don't you all kind of reach your hands towards it, and uh, we'll bless the water together. God, out of the chaos, uh, you created the, the world, you created life, and water is such a vital part of life. brought Jesus. He was baptized in the river Jordan by John. We have been blessed to be baptized in many places. We have been nurtured in many communities. And today we come together as one family. This water represents many places of joy, of refreshment, many communities, many summer um, blessings of uh, rest and renewal. And God, as we prepare to remember our baptisms, we ask you now to bless this water. Let this water be a sign of your spirit that lives and dwells in us. Let us remember that when we are touched with the water, that we are filled anew with your grace, that we live as your people. Let us celebrate our diverse gifts and live in this community as people ready to serve. Help us to honor those who don't always feel honored, help us respect those who don't feel respectable. Help us to be a community, not in conflict, but a community of peacemakers. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so for our renewal of our baptism, um, we invite um, those uh, who have been baptized to come up. And if you haven't been baptized, you can come up and touch the water too. And if you uh, want to talk to me about being baptized on another day, I'd be happy to do that. We, uh, I invite anybody who hadn't been baptized to talk to me before today, and nobody did. But if you have been baptized, uh, what we're going to do is um, we'll direct you up here. Deb and Jenny are going to help me kind of direct people by table so that it doesn't become kind of a traffic jam up here. Um, and we're going to start with the band because then they're going to do a song. And so um, we'll invite you to touch the water and make the sign of the cross on somebody behind you in line and just say, remember your baptism and be thankful. And then they'll do it to the next person in line. And um, so the band's going to come first and then Deb and Jenny. And as they direct you, uh, we invite you to come. And after the band has participated in the ritual, they'll sing a song and invite you to do the song. And uh, we're going to also pass the offering basket through after you've come to uh, the water table for the ritual. I think those are okay. They're going to come from either side. The offering basket will also be passed through. And as is our tradition, we invite everyone to touch the offering basket. Uh, we know some of you give electronically and may not put something in the basket today, but we invite you just to touch the basket anyway and give thanks for the gifts. Give thanks for the blessings of God in your life as the honor of the congregation today. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Feel free to take one of the stones after you have been blessed and uh, take that with you back to your seat.